Good morning, faithful listeners. You have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast, the one place where you can get a daily explanatory Bible reading to start your day strong. This is your host, Jen, bringing you a brand new episode out of Genesis. Happy Monday, friends and faithful listeners. This is the P40 Ministries podcast with your host, Jen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this morning. So I have something super exciting to tell everybody. My books, my coloring books that I have been working endlessly on, it feels like, for about a month and a half are finally out getting copyrighted and published. I am just so excited. I cannot wait to see the final result. Hopefully they look nice. This is my first time ever using um, Amazon services to publish a book. In fact, I've never published any book before. So this is very different for me. And um, I did all the work uh, all myself, including the formatting and everything, learned a lot of new things in order to publish these books. So hopefully they look good. I'm a little bit scared that the covers are going to be kind of funky, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully they look great and uh, I produce a pretty good product for everybody. But I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that on some other day. But today we are going to be talking about Genesis chapter 37 verses 29 through 36. So as usual, I will be reading out of the W.E.B. version of the Bible this morning, but you should read out of whatever version you prefer. And also grab that cup of coffee or that cup of tea, and let's go ahead and start reading. Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph wasn't in the pit, and he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The child is no more, and I, where will I go? They took Joseph's tunic and killed a male goat and dipped the tunic in the blood. They took the tunic of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Examine it now and see if this is your son's tunic or not. He recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. An evil animal has devoured him. Joseph is without a doubt torn into pieces. Jacob tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his waist and mourned for his son for many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. He said, For I will go down to Sheol, to my son, mourning. His father wept for him. The Midianites sold him into Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, the captain of the guard. Just a quick recap before we really talk about this last portion here of Genesis chapter 37. Joseph's 11 brothers were super duper jealous of Joseph and absolutely hated him so much that they wanted to kill him. But Reuben, who was the oldest brother and the firstborn, wanted the brothers to just kind of rough up Joseph a little bit. Probably Reuben didn't like him very much either, but Reuben did not want to kill him. He did not want to have that kind of blood on his hands. So he tells the brothers, just throw him into one of these cisterns. And a cistern is a almost like a big giant pit, throw him into one of these empty cisterns. And then later on, we will do something about him. And this was so Reuben could return him to their father safe and sound. But Judah, the fourth born child, had a different idea. And he said to his brothers, because he saw these traders that were walking through, uh, carrying spices down to Egypt. So he saw these traders and he's like, Let's sell our brother to these traders here and these merchants, and then they can sell him in Egypt. So let's, uh, let's just get rid of Joseph. We'll never have to deal with him again. We'll never have to deal with his annoying dreams and how much our father loves him so much. We'll, we'll just get rid of him, but we won't kill him. So let's just do that. That sounds like a great idea. We won't ever have to deal with this little brat ever again. So that is what the brothers end up doing. Now, Reuben wasn't there at this point. I don't know where he was. Let me see if I can find that, actually. It says, um, I don't know. It, it actually doesn't say where Reuben was, but he was out at somewhere. And it says that Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph wasn't in the pit and he tore his clothes. So Reuben probably was not a part of Judah's plan with his other brothers to um, to get rid of Joseph in that way, to sell Joseph as a slave. 
So Reuben was probably out in a different area of the field watching some other uh, flocks of sheep or flocks of goats or whatever, herds of goats, I guess. And when he returns to the pit to try to rescue Joseph out of it, he's not there. And he freaks out and he tears his clothing. Now, tearing their clothing, that was a very dramatized way, I suppose, to show how mournful you are. Like you are so angry that you tear your clothing. You'll, you'll see this a lot going forward in the Bible about people tearing their clothing in mourning. So Reuben was so upset that Joseph wasn't in that pit that he tore his clothing in front of his brothers. So he, he, the firstborn, who was typically the birthright holder, and the other brothers would have had to look up to him because he was the one who was going to take care of the families after um, their father died. They probably looked up to Reuben. So when they see Reuben tearing his clothing in pain over the fact that Joseph is gone, they probably are like, uh-oh, we did something kind of bad here. Reuben, who is the firstborn, uh, the birthright holder of our family, is not too happy. And so Reuben returns to his brothers and he's like, the child is no more. And I, where will I go? And so Joseph was much, much younger than all of his brothers besides Benjamin. Joseph was one of the youngest, the second to the youngest. Reuben was probably kind of old at this point. I wouldn't say old, old, but definitely an established man. So he calls Joseph a child and he's like, this child is no more. Where will I go because of this? What am I supposed to do? He's basically saying to his brothers, what the heck am I supposed to do? The person who I'm supposed to be protecting is gone. What have you guys done? And he's showing how mournful he is over the fact that Joseph was sold into slavery. So now, after this, after Reuben has this uh, big old scene, the brothers are kind of thinking, uh-oh, <laughs> what are we supposed to do? So they end up taking Joseph's tunic or that coat of many colors that we talked about. And remember that they ripped it off of him before they threw him in that pit. So they had the coat. They kill one of their father's goats, which was another thing they shouldn't have done. And they dip the tunic in the blood. So they made the tunic look bloody. They made it look bad so that it could seem like Joseph was eaten by a wild animal on his way down to visit his brothers. So the brothers didn't want, obviously, did not want Jacob to know that they had sold Joseph into slavery. I mean, that would have been insane. Uh, consequences. I don't even know what Jacob had would have done if he would have found out about that. So they do this elaborate lie. I mean, they're deceiving their father, just as Jacob had deceived his father so many years prior to this. So the apple does not fall that far from the tree, does it? So they're deceiving their father by making up this elaborate lie that Joseph is dead and that they found his tunic on the side of the road as they were coming back up to um, go back home. After this, they bring the tunic to their father. And we don't know how long after this this was. But they say, look, we found this on the side of the road. Examine it to see if you think it's Joseph's or not. Jacob recognizes this tunic. And he says, it is my son's tunic. An evil animal has devoured him. Joseph is without a doubt torn into pieces. Jacob is believing this lie that his sons are selling to him about Joseph. And Jacob tears his clothing. He is so upset. He tears his clothing and he puts on this sackcloth on his waist and he mourned for many days, it says. And a sackcloth was basically, I imagine, a potato sack. It was a way to show everybody around you that you were deeply mourning. You weren't taking care of yourself. You weren't putting on your fancy clothing or bathing or doing anything like that. You were wearing a potato sack, pretty much. So that is what Jacob here is doing. He is putting on this sackcloth to show his entire family how deeply, 
troubled and mournful he is feeling over his son, Joseph. And it says he refused to be comforted and all of his sons and all of his daughters rose up to comfort him. I can't even imagine what those brothers who sold him are now thinking, seeing their father in this much pain. You know, they did love their father. They were jealous of the fact that their father did not love them the way that he loved Joseph. So they did want that love from their father, though that is absolutely no excuse for anything that they did. And don't get me wrong, I am not excusing them in any way, shape, or form. But imagine how they're feeling now that they have caused their father so much pain. I can't handle it when my parents cry. (laughs) I can't handle it. I hate it when my parents cry. And I haven't seen my dad cry very often, but I see my mom cry sometimes. And it's just the worst feeling. It just like sinks my heart. And I actually have a funny story about that. So on my wedding day, my parents were walking me down the aisle because my mom and my dad both walked down the aisle. And (laughs) I was doing my vows and everything. And my parents were in the audience at this point. And I hear my dad weeping. (laughs) really, really loud. Like he was weeping. And I don't often hear my dad weep. In fact, I never hear him cry. This was one of the first times I heard him cry. But because I heard my dad behind me sobbing really loudly, I started sobbing really, really loudly while I was doing the vows. And it was super embarrassing. So I'm feeding off of my dad crying and I'm just sobbing harder and harder and harder as the vows are happening. And it was disgusting. I have horrible pictures of my wedding because I just have snot like coming out of my nose and running down my face and my makeup is smearing because I'm sobbing like a crazy person. And it was because my dad was crying. So it's just a funny story to me. So to see your father like that for so many days, mourning over his son that he believes is long gone, who is dead, would just be heartbreaking and would just be absolutely terrible and counterproductive. It, I mean, he didn't love the other brothers anymore after Joseph was gone. There was absolutely no reason for these brothers to do this, not only to Joseph, but to Jacob. Jacob was wrong, yes, in favoring one child over the others and favoring one wife over the others, I should also mention. But he didn't love the other sons more because Joseph was gone. And this was the sons kind of deceiving themselves into thinking that if Joseph's gone, it's going to be better for me. How often do we think that kind of stuff? How often do we think, you know, the grass is going to be greener on the other side? Or if only it was this way, it would be better. Or if only that person wasn't in my life, it would be better. Or only if this or only if that. It's never going to be better. I mean, as as bad as that sounds, there's always going to be problems in our life. And so they just traded. These brothers just traded one issue for a completely different issue and caused way more pain to themselves and to their father and to Joseph than they would have ever had to do. They caused so much pain and so much trouble for everybody. And Jacob says after this, I am going to go down to Sheol to my son mourning. And his father wept for him. So this was intense mourning that Jacob had over Joseph being lost. And he says, I'm going to go to the place of the dead with my son. I'm just going to die, is what he's saying. So he's being, I shouldn't say overly dramatic, but he kind of is. But he's saying, I am going to die with my son. I, I'm just going to kill myself. I'm going to die with my son. I can't handle this kind of pain. And it says, Jacob wept for him for many days. Now, in verse 36, to end this chapter, it says, Joseph is not dead. He is alive. And he said, it says those Midianites that took him out of that pit sold him into Egypt to this man named Potiphar, who was an officer of Pharaoh. So he was the captain of the guard. So Joseph got sold to a man of a high rank. And this is really significant. It just shows how God is taking care of 
Joseph all the way to the end. And, and we will see that as we continue with Joseph's story, how just God continued to see Joseph's plight and just bless and bless and take care of him and take care of him over and over and over again. And he grew Joseph into this incredibly strong person that we will eventually talk about later. And I keep saying this and I'm going to say it again. I just love Joseph's story. <laughs> it's just such a fascinating story to me. As someone who has, and I, I will never say I've been through anything that Joseph has ever been through. I have not. And I, I can't stress that enough. But as someone who is very motivated, I can just feel with Joseph how horrible this must have been for him and how terrible all of this was and how much resentment he might have harbored towards his brothers for years and everything. But I could go off on a tangent forever and <laughs> I am not going to do that. So I'm going to just stop right here and tell you guys that I am sorry for not uh, <laughs> uploading a blog post this weekend. I got really sidetracked with the books that I'm trying to complete or actually have completed. We'll see how they look though. I'm just so, so pumped about them. So I'm sorry about that. I have been working like crazy trying to get those out before Easter and um, all that good stuff. So unfortunately, my blog has been a little bit behind and I do apologize to you guys for uh, for that. But hopefully now that I have some free time because those books are complete, hopefully we'll see. <laughs> I will be able to get to my blog a little bit more and do that weekly blog post for you guys once again. But everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast episode this morning. Make sure to share it on your social media platforms and to rate it five stars. You know, one way that you can not only help me out, but also spread the gospel is to rate the podcast five stars because the more more ratings I get, the more people find the podcast. And the more you share it, obviously, the more people will find it also. So both those things are not only spreading the word about P40 Ministries, but it's also spreading the word of God. Because the only thing we do on this podcast, pretty much, is talk about the Bible. And the Bible is the most important book. And Jesus says, the Great Commission, he says, go out and preach the gospel to every creature. So one way we can do that is to share things like the P40 Ministries podcast or maybe anything else that you are listening to that's biblical or Bible based or something you're reading. Just share those things on your social media platforms and let people know that they exist. You never know who you are going to touch. You never know who is going to listen to what you might say. So spread the gospel and share this podcast on your social media platforms. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I want to ask all the faithful listeners to have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy listening and God bless. <laughs>